So welcome back everyone, my name is Echo and I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. In today's Minecraft video, we are back on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version, for a full update release. This is the version 1.17.30. It is available on iOS, Android, Windows 10, Xbox, Switch and PlayStation. Here is the official confirmation from Jay Wells, Megaspud. He's the Minecraft community manager. Give him a follow. We have a Minecraft Bedrock Edition update rolling out on all available platforms today. Check out the change log for 1.17.30 here. Please note, the update can take a while to reach all platforms and realms. Thanks for your patience. If you want the official change log, it is down below. So welcome back. Finally, we have a brand new update for Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version. As it says, 1.17.30. It looks like we've skipped 1.17.20 and they have combined 1.17.20 and 1.17.30 in this update. There is so many changes to go through in today's video. So if you could leave a like, I do really appreciate it. It has taken me two hours to set up and prepare today's video so you fully understand every single change. And yes, I did manually place and write on these signs one by one. I don't usually set a like goal, but considering how long this took me, can we get 5,000 likes on today's video? Starting off with new features, respawn blocks explode game rule added the respawn blocks explode game rule which can be used to prevent respawn anchors and beds from exploding so as you guys know we try and activate this you'll notice that it doesn't blow up if we grab another one in fact i'm gonna break this just to be really really careful here if we go over here and we do forward slash game rule and we do uh is it exploding the respawn and then we set it to true and we tap on this as you can see it blows up now this also affects the nether as well so let me show you the illegal use of beds in the nether if i try and tap on this it blows up but if we change this game rule to false place down a bed try and sleep in it nothing happens at all so a new game rule which i think would be really helpful for realms has been added Another feature that has been added, structure block, corner mode. Corner mode is used with the detect button in save mode to define the area to save. It will only detect corner blocks with the same name as the structure being saved. Now we have a structure block here and I've already added the um, corner mode here. You can see that they're, they're different. Like you look at this one. The top of this is different from here. Uh, again, I've not fully messed around with the corner mode. This has finally come to the Bedrock version. Has been available in Java for quite some time. But now when you're in a structure, you are going to have access to save, load, corner, and 3D export. Getting into new experimental features. More experimental features from Caves and Cliffs Part 2 are available in this update and can be enabled on the world creation screen please keep in mind that these features are work in progress still under in development and subject to change if you activate them your world might crash break or not work with future updates experimental features cannot be turned off after world creation so an important thing to remember with this if you are checking out the new caves and cliffs changes which i'm gonna go through in just a second uh make a backup of your world it's really really important that you make backups of your world especially if you're testing experimental features moving on it says here monster spawning monsters now only spawn in complete darkness now i'm gonna grab myself some milk here and show you what i mean by this one we're just going to drink this. So this is a change coming over from Minecraft Java Edition. Basically, it's to make life a lot easier for people in, in caves. So previously, mobs would spawn around here, right? And there's a little bit of light. Go uh, what the? I don't know what he's doing down here. There's a little bit of light going on. So mobs aren't spawning, but it's completely dark 
over here other than the glow like and some mobs are spawning basically this is to make it easier for the minecraft player not having to place down tons and tons of torches absolutely everywhere considering that this cave is absolutely huge so a good change still a work in progress but that's what it means this change is being made to balance the player's ability to light up the new larger caves and make them safer from monsters spawning note that this change only affects block light and not skylight multi-noise world generation new and improved terrain and biome generation algorithm that creates more natural terrain biome transitions i'm not gonna lie i've messed around with this uh, beta a little bit the biome transitions it's not amazing so for example like near my spawn in this world there was a maze of biome like honestly it was the tiniest maze of biome in the middle of a plains I feel like the biome blending is still not perfect in the bedrock version. Again, we're still a little bit away off from the next major update being 1.18 caves and cliffs. But yeah, like that's the change that it keeps talking about over, over here. Uh, it says here, improved surface decoration that detects the difference between when blocks are generated underwater and underground. I covered that in a beta. Everything I'm going over, by the way. I have covered in separate betas. I'm just re-going over this information. Introduces large ore veins to world generation, adding more strategy to mining. If we do forward slash uh, effect at P, now let's go and we do this, so 10 and true. And go down here. I've messed around with the ore generation. Now in beta, they finally fixed it. But in the full release, you can see here, the bigger veins are not so much bigger. Again, this is slightly behind. And I've checked a little bit of places for ore generation. And this is what I have in my world. If you find any giant ore generations, I'm talking like 20, 30, 40 blocks. Please send me a picture on my Twitter. My Twitter is just at Echo Egg Soldier. I would love to see it, especially in this latest update. But this is what my ore generation is looking like. And yes, I do have all the caves and cliffs experiments enabled. If you want the features I'm checking out today, you're gonna have to enable these. Introduces noodle caves to world generation, creating small pathways between bigger caves. Introduces the possibility of dry cave entrances to make it easier to access the new cave. So previously in beta, everything was done via water. You'd have to go into a river and then go into a cave. Now you're able to find cave entrances that are not dominated uh, by, by water. It says here, introduces a new algorithm that finds suitable spawn positions closer to the origin. So this is basically trying to spawn you at 0, 064, oops, 0, 064, 0 on your coordinates. People prior to this can be spawning like thousands and thousands of uh, blocks away. So that's finally been fixed. Added logic to save and load sub chunks by absolute Y index to support data driven dimension height ranges. Getting into the changes, updated the achievements button and moved from profile screen to the main menu and pause screen. We hit pause, we can see it right here. So glad that they made the change because previously over here would have been your achievements and this would have been your settings button. It's now here, so much better so much cleaner i'm glad they've taken feedback if we go to the dressing room as well they're no longer inside of here let's keep going fixes there's a lot of these performance and stability optimized pacing pasting unicode text into book and quill here's a book and quill unicode looks like this it's kind of like the crazy text font uh previously it was breaking the game it was really really bugged out i've covered that again in a beta fixed a crash that could occur when crafting a crafting table with gameplay tips enabled fixed a crash that could occur after disconnecting mm. from the internet while playing in an online session as the client on ios devices fixed a crash that could sometimes occur when downloading large marketplace worlds you're gonna see a couple of errors in today's video i was gonna see how long it took for me to make a mistake there's the first one. I think it's the second one, actually. Gameplay. Worlds with the caves and cliffs experimental toggle enabled are now more likely to have the same default world spawn positions 
as well as without the experiment using the same seed. So for example, I've got this with the experimental toggle on, right? If you were to load up the exact same seed without the caves and cliffs enabled, then you come to this location, it's basically to give you the same things and stuff like that. Uh, specifically to do with spawning, by the way, spawning in the same location, not to do with like villages and things. Uh, here's a pretty good one. Matched respawn from bed behavior with Java edition by attempting to avoid placing players on damage dealing blocks when waking up and attempting to place the players on the side of the bed they entered from. I kind of butchered that. Basically, whenever you enter a bed, if I enter from here, it's going to try and uh, exit me from here rather than spawning me and trying to spawn me on the magma blocks, for example. So we've got a forward slash game mode S and we do forward slash time set night. If we were to stand on this corner and sleep, when we eventually leave this bed, it is now going to put me in the exact same place that we slept. Now, prior to this, people could sleep here and it would spawn them behind walls. Another thing we're going to do here is where it's still nighttime. If we stand here and sleep, when we exit, it's going to exit me at the bottom of the bed. It shouldn't exit me on the magma blocks, as you guys can see there. So a Java edition parity, very, very good one. Just makes life a little bit easier. Nether portals placed between chunks no longer break. When leaving the nether, damaging buff effects no longer bypass absorption hearts. Enchanting tables, enchantment probability is now weighted. This is to do with getting various different enchantments. Again, I have gone over all of these, so I'm not showing the bug reports today. Again, you want to read the bug report, it's down below. Fixed incorrect position when dismounting at a negative world height. Here's also a parity. Abandoned villages are now far rarer, more closely matching the Java edition. That's the village that is dead, has cobwebs, etc. going on with it. Fixed emissive light propagation in ray tracing mode by increasing irradiance, irradiance, cache sample size. Again, I can't remember what this was entailing. Fall damage is no longer applied when falling into scaffolding. So you can literally fall incredibly high, by the way. So forward slash game mode S. This shouldn't kill me. It did there. So you need to be like really, really central when doing this. Let's try it again. Game mode creative. Going back up. Game mode S. There you go. Didn't take any damage. So we'll try this one again. The exact same location. We'll go a lot higher here. We'll go back to game mode S. Don't kill me. It killed me that time. But again, there is ways to not kill yourself. It's all about being on the absolute perfect uh, scale. Like, you need to literally be center as much as possible. Or you're going to get yourself killed. But now you can use scaffolding as a prevention from falling. Again, I would still rather use a water bucket. But hey, it's doable. Getting into changes with mobs. This is one of my favorite ones in today's video. Cartographers will now only give maps to undiscovered monuments. And this is also to do with the uh, huge mansions as well, the woodland mansions. So I went and explored this before, right? Now it's super annoying. It's been a bug and a problem for a long time, right? It's so annoying. You, you buy another one from this guy and it would take me to the exact same one. So I went to explore this one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another one from him, which is this one. This is different you can see on the map it is different and if i was to go to this one and buy another one he's then going to show me a different ocean monument huge fan of this change i wanted this for a long time and they finally did it tweaked iron golem spawning logic to better match java edition more parity axolotls now spawn only when there is stone up to 10 blocks under them and not inside bubble columns Collecting fish or axolotls with a bucket no longer immediately releases them. This is something I've hated for a long time as well. We put a fish, put, 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 put a fish, put a, put a fish. Okay, let's try again. Try, trying to put a fish in. Put a fish in there. Pick it up. Like previously, it would be like putting it down straight away. You probably had the same problem. Like pick it up and it would instantly put it down. You then have to pick it up again. And it'd be so annoying if you were in like uh, the oceans somewhere. That has finally been fixed. Same with axolotls, of course. Armor stands now drop 
equipped items when destroyed by fire or lava. I love this one as well. So previously, anything on an armor stand would still burn in lava. We have netherite armor and the debris. Break this. It falls in there. The armor stand is going to die and break. And these are going to pop off. And they're not going to be destroyed. As you guys can see, we picked them all up. I love that change. Limited. The maximum number of phantom mobs that can spawn. Basically on bedrock it would spawn like 20 to 50 phantoms over a long period of time. Goats now play their impact 3 sound. Grown up goats no longer lose their horns when reloading a world. Baby goats no longer have horns. Fixed an animation parity issue with skeletons not using both arms to hold their bows. Undead mobs standing near powdered snow now burn normally. Powdered snow above undead mobs now prevents the burning effect. Multiple shulkers are no longer able to spawn in the same position from spawn eggs or end city generation. Mobs can now pathfind correctly when standing on amethyst buds. Buds, clusters, etc. Uh, so we can put these on here. They can now... Traverse and go across these without any problem at all. I've been testing this. This is why we've got so many pigs in my world, but that has also been fixed. Lightning no longer randomly strikes mobs that are under blocks. Fixed mobs, sometimes rendering with incorrect geometry when viewed from the structure block preview window. Please move, Mr. Piggy. I don't want to hurt you. Experimental features wither can now be spawned at negative heights. The ghasts, these are my favorite ones as well, by the way. Ghasts no longer spawn in less than a 5x4x5 five by by five area. So good. Magma cubes can no longer spawn in less than 3x3x2 three by three by areas. Medium magma cubes now have a larger hitbox. The thorns enchantment now does knock back two mobs. Some really good changes there. Changes with blocks. Cave vines can now be pollinated by bees. I've tried this, by the way, and I still can't get it to work. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that one. Enchantment table now emits light level 7. The falling position of pointed dripstone is no longer slightly offset. I'll tell you what is offset, though. Like, the actual texture, you can see it's still slightly off. Now, the change here is to make sure when we break this, it falls just on this block. So, watch. It just falls on this block. Slightly off previously, so it would kind of fall on these ones. So that's now been fixed. Disabled biome tinting for spruce and birch leaves. Bubble columns are now placed properly when loaded with a structure block. Grass and water block tint colors are no longer slightly randomized with noise. Fixed light block not being displayed correctly when held. And I don't have the light block with me. I think I've put that over there somewhere. Let's just do forward slash give at p light underscore block. So I think, yeah, I messed around. So did I, did I make a mistake here? Light blocks are now, okay, so no, no, all right. Well, I didn't, I didn't show you guys this one regardless. So this is to do with uh, this one. Fixed light block not being displayed correctly when in, in held in hand. So I think it was like the position of when you were holding this, it was kind of broken. Continuing on, weeping and twisting vines now grow correctly after the player breaks them. Minecarts with chests will now copy over its chest contents when placed uh, when advanced pick when advanced pick blocked. Man, I'm making a butcher of this. So yeah, uh, you will now have the same items when you pick block them if you do a minecart with a chest. Crimson roots now have a small chance of growing on warped nylium blocks when using bone meal. I showed you that not long in a beta as well. Candle now drops when candle cake is pushed by a piston. Voila. Cake disappears. Candle does not. Renamed structure blocks will no longer have the incorrect data mode on creation. Unicode font now correctly highlights on signs with glowing text. You can see that. It's not amazing, but it still glows. Pumpkins placed facing south, east, or west now can be used to trade with villagers if they were mined with silk touch tools. More candles can no longer be added to candle placed without any supporting block. Let me read that again. More candles can no longer be added to candles 
placed without any supporting block. That's a weird one. Okay. So wait, what does that mean? So does that mean like if we try and ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So we can't add another one. Ah, all right. That's that. That's what that, that's what that means. Uh, shulker boxes now remain in dispensers when dispensed at world height limit. Monsters spawners no longer emit light. Powdered snow can now be collected with a dispenser. Now, again, you need a bucket with this, though. You need a dispenser and you need a bucket. So if we do it, it goes in, and then we do it again. It gives you uh, the bucket, the empty... Nope. Do it again. It gives you this. Do it again, and yeah, there you go. You, are, you will need a bucket, by the way, to do this. Otherwise, it's not going to work mm. at all. But yeah, you can now get that working with a dispenser. Target block now conducts redstone signals. What is with these all farm animals ruining today's video? Fixed text from signs drawing on maps on ray tracing enabled hardware. Amethyst cluster and amethyst bud can no longer be placed on grass path blocks. Can't put it on here, but you can place it on the side still. But you can't place it on top. I've tried so many different things. What happens if we do this though? No, I still can't. Still can't do it. But yeah, that's the latest change there. Corrected. Deep Slate Lapis Lazuli Ore. Name from Deep Slate Lapis Ore. That's a mouthful to say. Fixed bed display. If the foot of the bed is in a brighter area than the head. Fixed larger chest display. So the brightness end of the chest is chosen to light the whole chest. Dispensers now remove bubble columns when removing water. Sea pickles now change light depending on being in underwater or not. Snow layers are now melted by light from torches, etc. Vanilla parity falling gravity blocks will no longer break when landing on certain blocks. There is a long list of blocks, but hoppers, stairs, cauldrons, compost, composter, iron bars, and glass panes. Whenever we break these, they no longer break the sand block. There is a long list of features that has been changed for this. Half of the enchantment table book doesn't render dark anymore. Blocks moved by a piston no longer appear white while moving. So you'll see here, they're not white blocks. For a very brief second, they would be white. Doesn't matter if it's a regular piston or a sticky piston, they're no longer white. Finally been fixed. Spore blossoms no longer have randomly offset hitboxes. Measurements of hitbox of spore blossoms now match Java edition. Moss blocks and moss carpet now break when moved by pistons and sticky pistons can no longer pull them. We hit this lever. Carpets and moss block both break. Can no longer be pushed by them, which is a really weird one because it's a full block. Wonder why that is. Really, really interested as to why that is. Water dripping from pointed dripstone can no longer fill cauldrons with potions. We're sorry. We knew it was fun, but too overpowered. It's a really, really cool on this. So if you had this and water above it and potions in a cauldron, uh, you literally had an infinite potion machine. I don't know who reported it, but I'm kind of sad because it was super, super awesome to have. Fixed an issue causing slime and honey block movement slowdown to not be fully applied to players. Light blocks are once again visible while holding one and probably showing their brightness value. So again, this is to do with the, the levels. You can do them. Remember, you can change the level of these and you're able to hold whatever light level you get. Right now we have the, the zero one. This goes all the way to 15. So changes with light blocks. Fixed light blocks not being removed when destroying them while holding a light block. So previously you couldn't break this if you were holding one of them. Yeah, really, really, really strange bug. Moving on, fixed light block brightness not being adjustable when interacting with it, which is basically what I just showed you, the ability to just tap on it and change the light level. That's finally been uh, fixed and improved. More improved, more parity. Fixed barrier blocks being destructible while not holding a barrier block. And this was to do with, I don't know where the barrier block is. I don't think I've got it here. If you, uh, you were able to break it in survival. It was a really, really weird bug. I remember checking it out in the uh, uh, betas. Getting into items, shulker boxes now drop their content 
when destroyed as an item. Here's the comparison here. Regular Shulker, and this is a Shulker with a Nether Star. So if we break this, it drops the item. This one has nothing in it. If we break it, it now gets destroyed. Bows and Tridents are now held more similarly to match Java Edition. Eating Churris Fruit while gliding no longer deals full damage to the player. Swords can now break bamboo in a single swing. Let's go to game mode, survival. We have the bamboo break and break. A parity change that a lot of people have wanted for quite some time. Fixed a bug that could cause the trident shield and crossbow to render incorrectly when an additional player is connected over the internet using a marketplace skin. Fixed a bug which could cause the spyglass to appear as if it's being thrown when using a custom skin. Using a powdered snow bucket on a cauldron filled with powdered snow no longer creates a new powder snow block. Clock and compass items no longer function in the re recipe book. I'm sad about this one too. So recipe book here, if we were to type in compass, now we need to go to game mode, uh, creative here. We type in compass, you can see here that the compass is facing down. Even if I'm on a different angle and I access this, it doesn't change. Same with the clock. The clock by default is now going to be central. If I grab the clock, you can see that the clock is of course not uh, central. It's over this side. So yeah, somebody reported that. Kind of sad, but you now have to craft them if you want to know the time of day or you have to come a above caves and stuff like that. Lava bucket can now be emptied into a cauldron filled with lava. Fixed offhand shields. Clipping into players' arms while in third person. Holding a shield in marketplace maps no longer shows a content error. Made projectile items move more smoothly when far from players. Strong, long, splash, lingering potions can now be placed in the brewing stand manually. Soul speed boots can now be unequipped properly after losing durability. This bug was super annoying. They would just come back all the time and they'd be so broken. And you couldn't take them off. Finally been fixed. Diamond pickaxes found in Hoglin stable chests are now enchanted. Fixed held items not disappearing visually to other players after a player dies when the keep inventory game rule is enabled. Shears now correctly cut vines and glow lichen faster. Campfires and soul campfires now stack in the inventory. Audio changes, amethyst walking sounds are now affected by the player volume slider. Deep slate walking sounds are now affected by the player volume slider. Moss block walking sounds are now affected by the player volume slider. Sounds of moving in slash on powdered snow are now affected by the player volume slider. Jumping and landing on blocks uh, have now have now their sound affected by the player volume slider. Dripstone sounds are now affected by the block volume slider. Lots of slider changes here. And then we also have this one as well. Turtle eggs no longer produce the bone meal sound when placed on sand. Swapped the toggle sounds for levers so that they are now with uh, now parity with Java Edition. Using a water bucket on a fully filled cauldron now produces... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what this actually fully produces. Oh, the correct sound. <laughs> I did these uh, apart by mistake. Accessibility changes. Text to speech chat settings once again correctly narrates chat. Text to speech now correctly reads item names in the inventory. Inventory grid slots are no longer double counted for text to speech focus controls. There is a lot of changes with the UI, but we keep going. If you're still watching in today's video, let me know in the comments section. There's so many changes. Fixed the hotbar being misaligned with XP bar by one pixel. This is a change that has been waiting for a long time. So it's really hard to show you, but uh, Bedrock uh, hotbar was off. It was broken. They finally managed to fix it after all this time. It's been reported for a long time. The hotbar is no longer too dark when anti-aliasing is decreased. The crosshair no longer flickers during multiplayer. Using the touch interface holding the output slot on the stone cutter or loom will now rapidly craft items. Fixed an incorrect pop-up when attempting to activate a pack 
with missing dependency. Fixed translation issues for some keys containing uppercase letters. Replaced loading bars with new loading spinner in the marketplace. Recipe book crafting estimates, uh, estimates no longer differ from the actual result. Cursor items no longer count towards recipe ingredient in recipe book. The selected recipe in the recipe book is now deselected when the player runs out of ingredients. Non-craftable recipes no longer display in recipe book when search mechanism is used. Nether blocks now appear in the crafting grid if any other ingredient is unavailable. Fixed a wireless network connection error message that appeared when players were connected via a wired network. Fixed various spelling errors in the character creator. Again, so many UI changes here. It's really, really good. Hover over widget buttons. We're showing corrupted appearance before the full load was complete. Fixed a leg legibility issue with some Japanese font characters. Riding an animal now displays the correct tooltip term when played on a non-touch screen. Experimental warning message is no longer inconsistent uh, is no longer displayed inconsistently when loading beta worlds. A debug string no longer shown for how to open chat. Fixed an issue where the item category text color did not match the item text color if it was changed in resource packs. Fixed an issue where patterns in the loom would not display correctly with some texture packs. The emote wheel no longer appears when pressing Ctrl and B in game. Fixed input method editor, IME, not working after suspending the game on Windows 10 devices. Added a new sidebar to some marketplace and dressing room related screens to help better improve experience of navigating these areas. Let me show you dressing room. I showed you them previously. We have them on this side here. So you've got like the dressing room, you've got the character creator, the classic skins, the emotes, and even your cape section as well. If we go back to uh, the game and marketplace, we have the same, same things going on on here too. So yeah, these are to make things a little bit easier for you so you can access marketplace, uh, sorry, mash, marketplace, uh, categories, skins, worlds, textures, master packs, you name it. That is the latest change. Uh, and that is exactly what this means. There is now an item transferring animation when deselecting a recipe. Sidebar text is now localized properly when a new language is loaded or the current language changes. Fixed a bug that could cause the sign in button to appear behind the marketplace button. Fixed the Noto San smooth font on Windows and Xbox platforms with the Japanese local to address legibility and usage of correct characters. Fixed CR characters incorrectly appearing at the end of lines for some display languages. Enabled some enabled new achievement screen for VR, not including PS VR. Placing a sign on rooted dirt now correctly opens the text editor. The sign in dialogue is no longer shown on a split screen game to any other to anyone other than the primary player on PlayStation 4. Fixed tamed wolves being transparent on the structure. Realms and commands changes. So to make things easier, I'm not placing them on signs. Realms improved responsiveness of realms menu particularly on nintendo switch the download well button is now visible for worlds on expired realms two player realms no longer count against the 10 player realm limit realms reset button will now navigate to the loading screen while reset is happening the realm slot screen will now open faster and have a loading dialogue if it takes a long time the realms backup page now only shows the most recent 1,100 realms backup to prevent text overlapping issues. Switching the active world slot in realms no longer spams the fetching world info. Prompt renaming a realm now takes effect immediately while playing. Fixed some issues with being unable to kick players via the user interface or the forward slash kick command. The text on the realms plus trial button 
No long on the play screen, no longer changes when hovered. Pressing the view privacy policy button now opens properly on Nintendo Switch. There's also been some command changes. Fixed a crash that could occur if a structure was placed with a command in an unloaded area and the structure was deleted. Teleporting a mob between dimensions no longer causes the mob to despawn. Loading a structure with the forward slash structure command now displays the correct output message. And last but not least, if you're still here, let me know. Technical updates. Let's read the change log. If you're interested in the technical side of Minecraft, there has been a lot of changes. Gameplay, fixes, commands, updated the resource packs, etc. for the latest version. There has been so many changes. Change log, it's down below. Just to put it into perspective at how big this update was, again, I think it's the combination of 1.17.20 and 1.17.30. There are so many changes. I apologize that I couldn't go into every single one in a bunch of detail, but you guys can check them out. And I have already previously gone over these in beta. I just wanted to go over it one more time. And I can say I am very happy to be at the end of today's video. Some fantastic changes and more importantly, parity features and so many cool things introduced. Caves and Cliffs part two features. Some of them have been added. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. If you did enjoy today's video and you made it to the end, again, let me know. Have a great day. Stay beautiful and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.